Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 4 of the course Applied Seismology for Engineers. Myself Dr. Abhishek Kumar. In earlier uh, three lectures, we discussed about primarily about continental drift theory, elastic rebound theory, how these gives an explanation about different land masses across the earth which are in continuous motion with respect to each other. There are some boundaries which are moving towards each other, some boundaries where is movement away from each other and then there are boundaries which are moving slide past each other or relative motion with respect to each other in horizontal direction. So, depending upon the type of movement, depending upon the rate at which the two boundaries are moving, there will be accumulation of strain energy along the plate boundaries. Primarily, when these are happening along the fault planes, these will lead to increase in build up of stresses. When the stresses build up is exceeding the in situ shear strength of the material, there will be failure in the material. This failure may be in terms of heat, in terms of rupture and subsequently there will be development of seismic waves which will be propagating from the point of origin or the point of release of energy interacting with near surface medium interacting with deeper layers also and subsequently there will be attenuation in the seismic wave characteristics which we will discuss in later lectures. At a particular site of interest, if you are interested in basically the response of the site of the building or the soil with respect to these seismic waves which are significantly altered in terms of their properties as moving from the focus towards your site of interest. So, how the system is going to respond to those seismic waves that will define whether the system will undergo complete collapse, whether there will be major cracks, there will be minor cracks or there will be loss of strength. So, whenever we are seeing the outcome of earthquakes, it is primarily in terms of damages, in terms of casualties, but entire process which is behind these damages is starting from the origin that is from the focus or the, uh, the release of energy from the focus then subsequently interacting with along the propagation path interacting with the material and reaching at a particular site again it will be interacting with the material. So, it is the modified ground motion which is uh, responsible for loss of damages, lots of uh, building collapse. Now, in today's lecture, okay, in lecture 2 and 3 we discussed about what are fault plane solution, then we also discussed like fault plane solution is basically a three dimensional um, uh, basically, it is a plane, but uh, the orientation of the plane is, are given in, in terms of two parameters. One is the strike value, which is going to give you how much is the inclination which the intersection of fault plane with respect to ground surface. So, the intersection of fault plane with respect to ground surface, it is going to give you a trace on the ground surface, primarily a linear feature on the ground surface. So, how what angle this particular linear feature is making with respect to north. So, this particular angle it is called as strike of the fault. Uh, we can go to next slide. Okay, so, where we can see basically this is the fault plane on which there is movement. So, you can see this is one fault block and adjacent to this particular fault block there will be another fault block where the two fault blocks are moving either moving towards each other or moving away from each other or there is relative motion between two. So, one is it is moving towards each other, other one is the other block is moving away from each other or there is relative motion between the two blocks. So, depending upon the type of movement, even this particular mechanism which is happening at the focus based on which we can classify whether it is a normal faulting, whether it is a reverse faulting or uh, strike slip faulting. So, primarily as I mentioned once we are interested to find out the fault plane solution. So, basically we are interested to find out what is the orientation which the, the fault is making with respect to strike or with respect to the north. So, if this is the direction of the north along the uh, uh, ground surface, then what angle this particular uh, fault trace which is you can say the intersection of the two dimensional fault plane with respect to ground surface. So, when the fault plane which is inclined and the ground surface when two are intersecting, it is going to create a linear features or the trace on the ground surface. So, what this particular linear feature is going to make with respect to north, this is going to define the value of strike. Again, this is 
the feature which is available on the ground surface. So, whenever we are looking at any fault maps or any may be seismological atlas, the orientation of the faults as appearing on the map or on the ground surface will be indicated or will be represented on such maps in terms of their respective strike values. Now, looking at this particular picture, what we can understand that strike is basically only the representation where the fault plane is meeting with the ground surface. It is not going to give you complete picture of two dimensional plane. This is the fault plane which is actually undergoing, uh, which is actually taking part in terms of accumulation of strain energy and subsequently in terms of fault uh, earthquake occurrence. So, in addition to strike, we have to have one more parameter that is dip angle. So, dip is basically if you consider the fault plane, it is an inclined surface, where the intersection of this inclined surface with respect to ground surface is marking an indication of how inclination of fault trace with respect to north. Same way, if this inclination we are going to see, so how much this inclination with respect to the ground surface, this particular angle, it is making an angle that is called as dip. So, dip is going to give you how much is the inclination of fault plane with respect to horizontal, strike is going to give you how much is the inclination of fault trace with respect to north and third angle, see strike and dip alone are uh, sufficient to define a fault plane, but in order to understand whether the particular fault plane it is undergoing movement towards each other or the two blocks along the fault plane are undergoing movement towards each other, away from each other or slide past each other, we have to have one more parameter that is called as rack angle. So, one more parameter which is defined as rack angle, it is basically going to tell you for a known value of strike, for a known value of dip, whatever is the fault plane, below this particular fault plane there will be football, above this particular uh, fault plane there will be hanging wall. So, during a particular earthquake or the, the ongoing process which further lead to an earthquake occurrence, during this particular process, what is the nature of relative motion between foot wall and the hanging wall? Usually, it is the movement in which the hanging wall is moving with respect to foot wall. So, if we say this is foot wall, this is hanging wall. So, how the foot wall is moving with respect to hanging wall? It is moving in this direction it is moving along the strike direction, it is moving along the dip direction or any other direction other than purely in the direction of dip or strike, it is going to give you the value of rack angle measured with respect to the strike of the particular fault. So, depending upon the direction in which the foot wall, uh, the hanging wall is moving with respect to foot wall, how this particular inclination is making an angle with respect to the strike, that particular angle is called as rack angle which has been discussed earlier also. So, primarily if we are interested to find out a particular, if we are interested to represent the fault plane solution. So, three angles are required, one is uh, the strike value, second one is dip value, these two will be required sufficient to, to represent a fault plane. If we have to represent a particular uh, mechanism fault plane so solution as well as the mechanism during a particular earthquake, then in addition to this we will also be requiring a value of rack angle, so that you can very explicitly uh, represent the nature of movement which trigger during a particular earthquake or if some movement, some GPS measurements are also there going to give you what is the in situ measurement which is happening maybe uh, per year or per decade, even those can be also represented in terms of dominating fault uh, uh, mechanism. So, plane finally, what we understood that the plane which is leading finally, it is leading to uh, rupture, it is leading to melting of the material, it is leading to heat, it is basically two dimensional plane, but this two dimensional plane in general is located in a three dimensional space. So, you are having a sphere, you are having earth, on the ground surface you might be having some trace of the fault but it is basically a three dimensional uh, structure, two dimensional structure, but considering the dip angle also. So, it is basically represented in three dimensional space, some value of inclination, then some length, some width and this is again it is not constant every time. So, it is again rotating with respect to the north. So, you can say plane it is two dimensional, but in the three dimensional space where the strike and dip value also can possibly change, we are talking about some three dimensional parameter. 
So, uh, whenever we are talking about representation of these uh, three dimensional uh, features, which is primarily indicating the dimension of fault uh, strike dip as well as the potential rack angle, we have uh, in general it is in three dimensional space, but whenever we are interested to represent so that we can understand what is the dominating fault mechanism on a particular fault or in a particular region or how these dominating fault mechanism of two nearby faults are influencing the failure mechanism or maybe the fault plane mechanism of a third fault which is significantly influenced by the seismic activity of these two faults, we can have those studies. Thirdly, if we have to have an uh, understanding about what are the characteristics of ground motion which can be generated, we can again take those information about strike dip into account to find out what is the orientation of my fault plane solution. And in addition, if rack angle is there or uh, whether the information about a particular earthquake was strike slip faulting or dip slip faulting, normal faulting. So, that can also be accounted and then subsequently can be used in terms of both in terms of understanding the uh, ground motion characteristics as well as in order to understand uh, in order to generate synthetic ground motion. So, the actual phenomena or actual problem at a particular site is happening in three dimension, but to represent this to represent the fault plane solution and typical movement during a particular um, earthquake, it is very much important that such representation should be done on piece of paper such that some maps which are giving you an indication about past earthquake location which are also giving you an in information about the trace of fault plane. But in addition to these two as uh, the dip angle we cannot show on the two dimensional map, rack angle we cannot show on two dimensional map. So, what additional thing can be uh, uh, done is you can take help with, with respect to maybe beach wall solution which was discussed in earlier lectures which will also give you an indication about depending upon the arrival nature the, the nature of first P wave arrival which was compression or tension at number of recording station in your epicentral region. Taking that into account one can develop which we also discuss in terms of animation like if it is normal faulting what is the basis based on which uh, beach wall solution can be developed. Similarly, when we are talking about reverse faulting also again what is the basis, what is the nature of P wave which are dispersing taking into account the nature of stresses which are there primarily along the fault plane and another perpendicular plane to fault plane that is auxiliary plane. So, we have, we have already discussed this in um, earlier lectures that how one can develop how, how we can represent a particular uh, mechanism of faulting during a particular earthquake on a two dimensional space in terms of beach wall solution. So, beach wall solution is going to give you what are the uh, I mean in terms of relative motion which is happening along the fault plane, what are the components which are compressive, what are the components which are tensile in nature based on first P wave motion. In addition to uh, as I mentioned this is whenever we are interested to find out P wave motion or uh, um, uh, development of beach wall solution, we will be requiring lot more information about first P wave arrival from nearby recording stations. So, that is related to development of beach wall. If in particular region we are having information about fault plane solution, we can take those information and again with respect to stereographic projection which we will be discussing in today's uh, lecture, one can again represent the fault plane orientation, the dominating direction of movement or the rack angle again on two dimensional space. So, three dimensional is actually the problem which will be in terms of fault plane solution and uh, typical movement, but representing it on a two dimensional plot which is basically the map, we can say maybe seismic atlas map or uh, uh, if, if we are discussing about uh, uh, maybe mineral depositions, again we can refer to this so that we can find out what are the bedding planes, what are the direction of mineral depositions. If we are again talking about folds, faults, so everywhere we can we can refer to even uh, uh, the orientation of conformity. We can uh, we can uh, uh, we can discuss and we can take the help of stereographic projection to, to represent those in terms of two dimensional space. So, as I mentioned 
there are lot more application which this two dimensional projection of three dimensional features primarily related to orientation and if some uh, signatures in situ signatures are there related to indication of movement can also be represented. So, here stereographic projection can be done or can be used in cartography, it can be used in crystallography, it can be used in structural geology also. So, what are the bedding planes, what are the plane of uh, discontinuity and then dip direction as I mentioned not only related to fault planes, but also in terms of in general understanding about the rocks which are available, what are the typical bedding planes available in, in, in particular uh, geological formations. Then of course, in stereo uh, uh, scopic photographs also one can take stereographic projection into account to represent uh, the variation in terms of physical dimension which are happening perpendicular to your ground surface on which generally you, uh, you, you represent a particular uh, two dimensional characteristics. So, basically in stereographic projection what we try to do with the help of stereo nets which is again a graphical representation of uh, may be great circle and small circles or representation of latitude or longitude of a particular uh, plane or a position we can take into account and try to represent it on a two dimensional space. As mentioned over here also, so in, in, in this particular figure we can see the actual fault plane is three dimensional space, we are having some value of dip, we are having some value of strike and in actual keep on considering that the strike value as well as dip value can change. So, it is it is basically we are we are dealing with three dimensional space. So, how this three dimensional space characteristics can be represented on two dimensional space that is called as stereographic projection. So, one uh, typical example given over here it one is about the primitive circle and then you can see the plan remain the same. So, you are still talking in terms of two dimensional space, but whatever was available over here has been represented using stereographic projection in two dimensional space. How we are going to do it and uh, how these two things are correlated with respect to each other that we will discuss in subsequent slides. So, overall stereographic is basically the representation of fault plane along with the dominating direction of movement of foot wall with respect to hanging wall using stereographic projection. So, uh, let us come back to the same problem that means, we are having a fault block you can call this as a fault block, this is a fault block or you can say this is a fault block 1 subsequently there will be another fault block. If we remember our problem this might be another fault block another fault block which is undergoing some kind of movement. So, you can say this is fault block fault block 2 and then depending upon the direction you can say if this is going like this other fault block is going like this you can say it is primarily a strike slip faulting. On the other hand you can have hanging wall going like this foot wall going like this normal faulting or when the two blocks are moving towards each other that is typical representation of reverse faulting. The nature of movement and the definition has already been discussed in earlier lectures. So, now this we can remove because now this is representation of what are the difficult uh, different fault planes which are uh, available in terms of governing the fault plane orientation during a particular earthquake. So, this is their fault block 1 and based on our understanding so far we can say this is our fault plane along which typical movement has happened. Remember uh, one thing here that we will be use, using stereo uh, nets or even beach wall solution we will be only representing the orientation of the fault plane as well as if possible the rack angle. Nowhere we will be representing here what is the area which is undergoing rupture. In, in later stage we will also discuss about what is rupture and how that is referred in this particular uh, lecture related to uh, earthquake occurrence. So, we are not talking here anything about rupture characteristics of a particular fault plane or of a particular fault. So, this is the fault plane, this is the fault plane which is basically a two I mean if you go to the ground this fault trace may be available 
if the fault is exposed to the ground surface you may see some fault trace otherwise you can go and seek for lineaments further go for uh, additional traces which are indication of that there is presence of fault in a particular uh, region go for detailed investigation and find out whether there is a possibility that a fault is present in a particular region or it is not. Okay, so, this is uh, the, the three dimensional space and primarily we are looking into a two dimensional plane in this. Now, here this is the plane which is we are talking about fault plane. So, what we do this is basically whenever we, we are told like we have to develop stereographic projection or this on stereo net we have to project a particular fault plane. So, this is the fault plane what we are trying to do in this particular lecture is consider this a projection plane which is usually you can see uh, this is perpendicular to your horizontal plane or as an observer I am looking perpendicular to this projection plane. So, if I am looking in uh, straight direction in horizontal direction. So, I am represent I am seeing a, um, uh, a sphere which is lying in front of me and then I am interested to find out or interested to develop the projection of this particular fault plane which is actually the orientation with beneath the ground surface on a particular plane which is called as projection plane or primitive circle which is actually uh, a plane which is lying horizontal. So, you can say initially I took a projection sphere and then on this particular projection sphere I took a projection plane maybe a two dimensional rectangle and the intersection of this two dimensional rectangle. So, you can consider maybe you can extend it further this is a two dimensional rectangle or a projection plane. So, once this particular projection plane cut the projection sphere. So, we will get along the periphery along the circumference of the sphere whatever points we are getting if you join all those points we will get the primitive circle which is again located in horizontal plane. This is the plane in which one is interested to represent a particular fault plane. So, this is basically primitive circle used to represent used to represent a fault plane. So, whenever we are told that a fault plane has to be represented we will be representing how this particular fault plane uh, in terms of projection different ways are there in which projection can be taken, but finally we will be representing the fault plane on primitive circle or the circle which is. So, if you are uh, if the if the map is ready you, we will be looking at the primitive circle such that how the fault plane will be represented if you are looking from the top. So, I will be looking from the top whenever I am looking at some stereographic projection or a stereo net how the lines on a stereo net are, indi are, are uh, shown it is basically you are looking from the top as an observer. When you are looking from the top observer I am looking from the top on a particular two dimensional plane in which some signature of fault plane which was not located completely on the primitive circle, but now so actually if you see this particular fault plane you can see point O is the represent is representing the circle of this primitive circle. I have to put my fault plane such that it should pass through this primitive this particular point O. The fault plane remains the same. So, I have just taken the fault plane over here slightly I have increased the size so that it can match the size of this particular uh, uh, projection sphere. Now, here we can see so, there is sphere along which on, on this particular sphere I have put my fault plane. So, wherever this particular fault plane uh, the projection plane and the fault plane are intersecting we can get some sort of this particular figure which is you can say interaction intersection of intersection of fault plane with projection sphere projection sphere. So, projection sphere and then you put your uh, your fault plane over there. So, whatever intersection is there along the circumference along the circumference or along the 
boundary of the sphere that is called as so this is called as projection of dipping plane this is basically if you see this was this is the direction in which it is dipping so fall dip how it is dipping beneath the ground surface this is in the this is to you measure the strike value this is to measure the orientation of this is used to measure the dip value. So, this is called as a projection of dipping plane. Now, whenever I am interested to develop the stereographic projection, I am basically interested that how the projection of this the projection of dipping plane can be transferred to primitive circle. Because dipping plane is again if you see the dipping plane is some points or the intersection of fault plane in the projection sphere. Now, nowhere I will be using projection sphere to, to, to represent finally, my uh, fault plane I will be using the primitive circle or projection plane not the projection uh, I will not be using projection sphere rather I will be using projection plane or primitive circle to represent the fault plane in the two dimensional space I will not use projection sphere there. So, if you look into this particular part or the projection of dipping plane it is still giving me an intersection or idea about what is the orientation of fault plane in the dipping plane as the intersection of fault plane with respect to projection sphere. What I am interested is the projection of this dipping plane on the primitive circle because finally, I will be representing the fault plane on the primitive circles. So, what are the orientation which are being transferred from this particular dipping plane on the primitive circle that is going to give me the stereographic of my dipping uh, plane. So, this is the projection of dipping plane, this is the dipping plane projection and which are given over here this is the projection of uh, the stereographic projection of dipping plane. So, we had some dipping plane how the projection of this dipping plane is being transferred to another plane which is called as primitive circle or projection plane how it is transferred finally, whatever you are getting over here this is the stereographic projection. So, when we uh, we are asked like we have to go for stereographic projection or we have to find out based on a stereo net what is the fault plane solution we are basically interested to find out the orientation of fault plane on a primitive circle as it will be appearing on the ground surface. So, I am considering projection plane or primitive circle as my ground surface on which I will be representing later on if I am going to use this particular uh, solution or stereographic projection I can use it further whenever we are having information about fault trace maybe past earthquake information epicenter location of those earthquakes. So, in addition to those we can also take this into account and put over there representing what is the orientation of the fault plane dipping plane and possibly the rack angle. So, typically uh, as I mentioned earlier not only in um, uh, fault um, understanding, but also uh, stereographic projection has lot many application primarily in rock mechanics, in mineralogy, in crystallography and stereographic photography also. So, primarily there are two types of projection which can be done you can go with the first one first one is called as wolf or uh, equal angle projection we can see over here all the projections which are shown again this is primitive circle. So, you can say this is primitive circle that means whatever we are looking at is basically a graph representing the ground surface or how it will be represent how how the ground surface is represented on the stereographic projections all is the ground surface taking the strike value and dip value we will be representing on the ground surface the fault plane solution. So, Wolf uh, uh, net that is first type of stereographic projection is generally used uh, in such a way that angle remain uh, conserved or the shape remain conserved. So, if we are interested to take projection of a circle finally, the projected thing will also be a circle so, the projected shape will also remain the circle that is why it is called as equal angle. So, whatever was the angle with respect to reference point before the same will remain conserved whenever we have tr transferred or we have taken the stereographic projection. So, it is generally used when the angles are mean to be preserved. So, here you can see even in terms of projection you can see all these are part of circles all these are the part of circle and these are appearing also like a circle because 
the angle has been preserved while developing these stereonets. Primarily these are used in terms of uh, mineralogy. Uh, again whenever we are discussing about wolf net, the projection is generally done, it can be done in upper or lower hemisphere on uh, with taking into account the primitive circle as well as the projection uh, sphere. So, projection sphere we take may be a top half or bottom half of the projection sphere and then transfer the projection usually we will take the bottom half and then transfer the projection of the fault plane or the dipping plane on the primitive circle. So, in this particular case it will be uh, uh, equal angle will be preserved in this particular case and it is more useful in terms of mineralogy. On the other hand we are having another one uh, method of uh, stereographic projection that is called a Schmidt method in which you can see though we are not uh, uh, preserving the shape that is why you can see as we are taking the projection you are not getting a circle, but you are getting other than circle it is more like ellipse. So, if, if we see with respect to actual area which is there on the bedding plane this is the projection in, done in such a way that all the projected area the area remains constant whether the shape is remain going to remain constant it will not uh, ensure that the, the shape remains constant, but the area which is taken for the projection that will be conserved that is uh, the objective of Schmidt method related to stereographic projection development. So, it is generally used in, in, in case of structural geology it can be used for fault plane solution. So, uh, geologists also use it when uh, again uh, in terms of uh, bedding planes also it can be used in order to represent the orientation of the bedding, uh, bedding planes with respect to uh, their strike and dip values on the stereographic projection. So, that is generally done in terms of equal area projection. Now, in this particular uh, method the projection is generally done on the lower hemisphere of the projection sphere or uh, the, the main circle with respect to which the projection circle was there with respect to which we will be transferring the projection on a primitive circle which is located at the base of this particular projection sphere. In first one we will be the projection sphere was there and then uh, the primitive circle was uh, was made to cut the, the projection sphere in half. In the second one the projection sphere is there and the primitive circle is kept at the base and then followed by which you can keep maybe the lower half hemisphere lower hemisphere of the uh, projection sphere onto the uh, uh, primitive circle. So, that will that is the basic difference in first case you will have uh, angle preserve in this particular case the projection sphere will remain same, but the primitive circle will pass through the half of the projection sphere representing the ground surface. In the second one the primitive circle will be passing through the bottom most point. So, you can say this is the bottom most point of the lower hemisphere. So, the, the primitive circle or the, the, uh, the projection plane will be passing through the bottom of your low, the bottom most portion of the uh, lower hemisphere of uh, uh, primitive circle uh, of the projection plane. So, Wolf ne uh, net generally as I mentioned we will be doing two kinds of projection one is where the fault plane is given to you and you have to transfer the orientation of this fault plane on uh, 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 primitive circle or the projection plane. There can be another possibility rather than uh, a complete plane there might be some lines which are available making some angle with respect to uh, uh, the ground surface. So, such representation primarily called as projection of line will also be done in terms of wolf net or Schmidt net. So, in both the cases we will be having in general we will be having two planes which we will be talking about one is the uh, projection sphere and second one is the projection plane. So, you can say this is the primitive circle or this is called as the projection plane. The intersection of projection plane with respect to the uh, projection sphere is, is going to give you this particular circle which is called as primitive circle. And if we recollect whatever was discussed in previous slide entire stereographic projection has been the projection of great circle and small circles on the primitive circle which is mentioned over here. 
So, what we will do? We will try to find out, we will try to firstly locate our plane or a line in the projection sphere, then transfer the projection from projection sphere to your primitive circle. So, this is in three dimensional view where you can see perpendicular to your line of sight is your uh, projection of grid, uh, uh, grid sphere or projection sphere and then perpendicular to uh, or along the like in horizontal plane with respect to your line of sight, whatever is located it is the primitive circle and extending it because initially we put a projection plane. So, projection plane is there and then along the periphery of projection plane and uh, projection sphere we will get the primitive circle. Again figure B is showing you how the entire process of projection will appear on a vertical plane. So, you can say this is projection sphere, you can say this is projection plane. So, this is projection plane or more specifically because projection plane will be you can say this is the projection plane, this is primitive circle, primitive circle. So, this is primitive circle, the other one is projection plane and the one which is located over here is projection sphere. There will be another point which is called a zenith which is basically considered as the point which is exactly located above the uh, point of observation. So, in this particular case we will say primitive circle is there and just above the point O on projection sphere whatever point is there that is called as zenith. So, zenith again in vertical plane it is located over here. So, the topmost point on the projection sphere located just above the center of primitive circle that is called as zenith and remember whenever we are having any bedding plane or fault plane that has to pass through particular point O in order to take project, uh, stereographic projection. So, this is the inclined plane as I showed in previous uh, slide also inclined plane is there of which we have to firstly find out the dipping plane and then we have to take the projection along the fault plane uh, along the primitive circle. So, this is the dipping plane you can say this is projection of dipping plane, projection of dipping plane which is basically the intersection of inclined plane with respect to the great sphere uh, uh, projection sphere. Okay, so, in order to take the projection here we will take some points which are mentioned over here along the intersection of projection sphere along with the inclined plane or along the periphery of dipping plane we have some points. What we will do in order to transfer the projection of this particular bedding plane to primitive circle we will join each of these points with respect to zenith point A with respect to zenith, point B, C and the intersection of this line with respect to primitive circle is marked by subsequently as point A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime and E prime. So, if we see all these points A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime and E prime all these points are located in the plane of primitive circle. So, if we start locating these points in our uh, figure B all these points will be in the same line, same horizontal line of primitive circle because we are seeing in uh, vertical plane. So, point D prime and subsequently all the points can also be located over here. So, we can have uh, A prime somewhere B prime also C prime also can be there D prime and then E prime can also be there and then subsequently you are having the end point. So, all these points from here are basically located over here as A prime, B prime, C prime and so on. So, all the points are basically located over here. Uh, the third one is how the how the projection finally will look into the primitive circle. So, here again we are talking about this is primitive circle. I mentioned earlier also primitive circle means you are talking about horizontal plane. So, we got the points A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime join all these points we will get the projection the stereographic projection of your inclined plane which was shown over here as. So, this is again still it is a line it is appearing like 
a curve because it is a line representing on the stereo net. So, this is an inclined plane and this is its stereographic projection of stereographic projection of of inclined plane. So, we have taken the projection with respect to zenith on a plane which is defined by primitive circle and joining all those points. So, we can actually see those points over here primitive circle inclined plane. So, you can actually see those points a prime b prime c prime d prime and e prime over here. So, this is a prime b prime c prime d prime and e prime. So, if you join all those points such that it is also should be passing through this is uh, like passing through this particular point O that is representing. So, every time when the starting and end point of particular uh, stereographic projection if you join by a line it should pass through point O. So, inclined plane here the, three, the, the plane becomes a line this is the uh, conclusion from here. Similarly, if you are having lines rather than plane again those lines will be on a particular inclined plane, but we do not have a complete picture of the plane. So, what we will see line means some inclination of bedding plane or some representation of uh, information along the bedding plane. So, you can see over here these are the three points or lines which are representing. So, rather than plane we are having these lines this time how these lines can be located on uh, in, in terms of stereographic projection. So, again we will repeat the same thing we locate these lines or this particular plane on which these lines are located then join all these points this point this point and this point we can join with respect to zenith point a b c join with respect to zenith the intersection of these lines with respect to primitive circle again here this is the primitive circle So, the intersection of these lines with respect to primitive circle this is going to give you the point A prime B prime and C prime. So, here you will be having a point A prime this is point B prime and this is point C prime joining all these points or mentioned over here you can get an inclination of point so, basically this is yes. So, this is uh, what you will get uh, again if, if you transfer the same thing. So, you are having some intersection of zenith joining point A and where it is intersecting with respect to primitive circle you got point A prime. Similarly, zenith with respect to B where it is intersecting with respect to the. So, there here you can mark this is point B prime. Similarly, zenith with respect to C you can mark this as C prime. So, B prime, C prime and A prime you join these points in this particular diagram basically this is not the B prime which is it is represented by this particular line. So, A prime, B prime, C prime which is if you join all these points we will again be able to represent a particular plane on which these three points A, B, C are located in a particular bedding plane. When we are taking projection of a particular plane we ended up in getting a line along the uh, on the primitive circle. If we are getting uh, projection of line it becomes a point. So, you see this was the line O A was the line finally, we are getting a projection on the primitive circle in terms of just one point A prime. Similarly, with respect to O B we are getting projection of point B prime similarly, with respect to C we are getting a projection of point C. So, you join point A prime B prime C prime again ensure that starting and ending is passing through O we will be able to get the projection of point uh, or line O A, O B, O C on Wolf net. So, line becomes point. Similarly, we are talking about Schmidt method as I mentioned in Schmidt method what we will do? We will take a lower hemisphere of projection sphere and the primitive circle or the projection plane should be kept at the bottom most point or should be passing through the bottom most point of your projection sphere. So, this is your projection sphere and this is your projection plane and this is the bottom most point 
in which basically it is represented over here also. So, you can see projection plane, this is a projection plane, projection sphere, this is the lower hemisphere of lower hemisphere of lower hemisphere of projection sphere, projection sphere. Again we are seeing in vertical direction or perpendicular to your line of sight and you are looking uh, parallel to your ground surface. Okay. So, this is again representing maybe primitive circle, where the primitive circle will come once you start transferring the projection of the boundary of your projection sphere, you will get primitive circle plane. So, this I am writing as primitive circle plane, where the primitive circle at later stage will be located. Again, if there is one particular point P located on the upper hemisphere of this particular plane, uh, which is like circle of pro, uh, projection sphere. So, you are having basically the point P, but that has to be transferred to your inclined uh, the projection plane. So, what we will do? There will be corresponding to point O, there will be a point O prime, which is actually the point of intersection of projection plane and the projection sphere. So, taking O prime as the center and O prime P as the radius, we will mark an arc, which is touching the projection plane. So, wherever it is touching the projection plane, basically that point is representation of projection of point P on uh, primitive circle. So, O prime P will be equals to O prime P prime because it, it is representing the same uh, radius. So, this is the primitive circle. If you, if you take maybe 10 points along the periphery, and take the projection very much similar to point P, take the projection from all these points, you will get like this. You will get the projections like this. This is end up in getting you a primitive circle. So, that is how you can develop firstly a primitive circle on which one has to locate your uh, projection. Uh, of fault plane. So, again take into account now your primitive circle is ready, take into account an inclined plane. So, whenever the inclined plane is passing through the lower hemisphere, again we will get some points which are again intersection of inclined plane on the lower hemisphere, you will get these points. So, transferring the projection very much similar to the projection of point P transferring the projection of these points, again this uh, uh, the inclined plane you can represent over here. So, this is the inclined plane, you can say inclined plane, inclined plane appearing if you are if, if, if you are looking in the direction parallel to your ground surface. So, this is the inclined plane representation. So, this is the plane which is represented over here like this. Again, as I mentioned, there will be number of points which are representation of intersection of inclined plane on the lower hemisphere. So, these points will start coming over here. There will be points which are basically located along this particular point. So, one point where E is over here, you can see taking O prime E as a radius, mark point E prime which is located on the primitive circle you will be able to transfer the projection of point E, which is the intersection of projection sphere with respect to fault plane. Similarly, we can get many more points as can be seen over here also. So, A prime, B prime, C prime basically these are the intersection, these are the projection of point A, B, C, D, E on the primitive circle using Schmidt method, where the projection plane will be put passing through the bottom most point of your great sphere, uh, lower hemisphere of great sphere. So, again this is the final result. So, uh, your projection plane, inclined plane everything was there and finally, joining the point A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime and further points, we will get the projection of this particular inclined plane. So, this was the inclined plane and the pro this is the projection of this particular inclined plane using stereographic projection.
the basic, basically this is representing how the representation of uh, stereographic projection uh, to uh, how the stereographic projection are used to represent a particular fault plane using Schmidt method. Again if we are talking about line, so again we will be having some points if you join those particular lines we will be having some points. So, take those points A, B, C as was done in case of Wolf method, A, B, C points are there. So, again taking O the bottom most portion and A which is the intersection of uh, which is the point which is located along the periphery of projection sphere. You can take that particular radius and then mark an arc wherever it is touching the primitive circle we can get the projection. So, this will be A prime, this will be B prime, this will be C prime. Joining these points we can basically transfer the projection of this particular line in terms of uh, points in the stereographic projection. So, this is three dimensional view and this is two dimensional view. Now, this is so far what we have done is we have taken a particular fault plane and represented by means of uh, line, we have taken some points and represented by means of some points on the stereographic projection. Now, there will be another point which will come into picture what if this particular fault plane whose strike value remains the same, but dip value is changing. So, how that will be represented over here that is represented if you see this particular picture. So, that means the inclination of O prime O double prime remains the same but point O prime A B C O double prime its orientation or dipping is changing that particular dipping change can be represented by means of locating the loci of all the positions of a particular point. In this particular case I am targeting with respect to point C. So, if there is a plane point C on the dipping plane if the dipping plane orientation is changing how the position of C is changing that can be located by means of loci of all the points you can join. So, this is the representation. So, your primitive circle remains the same, but as you are moving your uh, your your dipping dip of the fault plane it is changing the position of C will move along this particular line. So, this is representing. So, what is clear here? any particular line which is uh, any particular value which will be measured in this particular direction is representing change in the dip value. And if we see the, if we change the orientation of O prime O double prime that will represent the change in terms of the strike value of the fault plane. So, this is called as pitch of the line which is basically the loci of all the points having same position the strike value remains the same, but the dip value is changing. So, taking that into account we can develop great circles which are representation of longitude and small circles which are representation of latitude. Generally the projection of small are done uh, and great circles are also done in terms of 2 degree increment. So, whenever we are developing great circle or small circle we will be, we will be taking into account the uh, 2 degree and 10 degree increment. So, small small sections will be there which are 2 to uh, degree increment and then there will be bigger uh, divisions which are representation of 10 degree increment. So, uh, typically a stereographic projection when you go with Wolf method it will appear like this when you are going with Schmidt method that is equal area method that will appear to be like point uh, figure B. Mostly we will be using in this particular work related to Schmidt method that is the stereographic net given in terms of uh, figure B. So, it is basically again I am mentioning that it is the primitive circle. So, primitive circle representing the horizontal plane as I mentioned earlier also which is the inclination of uh, which is basically the projection plane on which we will take the stereographic projection and represent a particular fault plane. There are great circle which are representation of projection of plane passing through the center of the sphere. So, every great circle will be representing a plane which is passing through the center this is the center. So, whenever plane is passing through this particular center any particular plane it can be passing like this it can be passing like this anything which is passing or you can say the fault rays 
of a particular fault plane which has to be represented on this particular stereographic net has to pass through the center. So, all the uh, whatever is the stack of the value uh, of the fault plane, but it has to pass through the fault trace has to pass through here. This is called as the center of the sphere. So, it is generally used to represent plane having different inclination. Inclination means with respect to the north, how much is the inclination of the fault trace that will be represented over here. So, small circles as I mentioned this will be representation of dip angle of a particular fault plane. Look I have all the points which are changing its position as you are rotating the or changing the dip of a particular fault plane used to represent line having different pitch. So, we understood great circle in which the strike value will be measured and small circle along which the dip will be measured. So, overall it will appear like this anything which is having strike value of 0 that means you are oriented towards north south. If it is towards east west it can be represented like that. So, now here with respect to this we will be measuring how much is the strike and how much is the dip value. Let us see one numerical over here. So, we are interested to represent a particular fault plane having strike value of 40 degree, dip value of 30 degree and rack angle equals to minus 50 degree or a representation where the foot wall is moving away from the hanging wall is moving away from foot wall with an angle of 50 degree with respect to the direction in which strike is measured. So, what we will do? We will take a sheet of paper and put it on the stereo net, fix the center. So, this is the center which you are going to fix, mark point east, west, north, south. Then on that particular circle in which you will be transferring the projection, basically you will be taking a tracing paper on which the primitive circle is already marked, but not the projection. What you will do? You will count 40 degree which is marking the strike value of 40. So, you can count like here 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree and 40 degree. So, you are counting strike value which is given over here as 30 degree and then orient your trace paper like this. Then what you will do? You will rotate, you will mark 40 degree over there which is representation of uh, passing of uh, uh, fault plane then rotate that 40 degrees such that it should come at the same place where initially north was there. Then mark grade circle representing 30 inclination, again taking this into account count 30. So, firstly we will mark point A which is the intersection of grade circle and 90 degree small circle. With respect to this particular point count another uh, small circle which is at 90 degree inclination. So, this is the one. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and this is the 91. So, we have located point P which is basically representation of line passing through point P will be perpendicular to your fault plane having dip value of 30 degree. Then find the intersection of this great circle and small circle which represent 50 degree. So, what we will do because now we have to locate the rag angle. So, what we will do? count with respect to this point 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, here this is the point we will be counting from here. This is the rack angle because it was measured with respect to strike. So, not this part, but we will be counting from the top and you will locate the point R 1 which is passing through a great circle which was also passing through point A. Then find another point R 2 in the great circle which is 90 degree below R 1. So, with respect to R 1 along the great circle which is shown over here mark a point R 2 which is at 90 degree with respect to point R 1. Now, rotate the overlay in such a way that point P and R 2. So, you have to rotate your sheet such that point P and point R 2 should fall in same great circle. Draw that great circle as shown over here. Then remove the stereo net, rotate the drawing in such a way that whatever north south at the beginning you had marked, now it should be located in the same direction. So, rotate the drawing in such a way that north south becomes vertical. Remember in initial uh, uh, step, first step what 
we had done we marked north west east east south uh, north east west uh, and south all the four prominent direction now we will rotate our sheet because we have got the value of fault plane which is having 30 degree inclination 40 degree strike and perpendicular to this so this is basically your fault plane projection and this is basically your auxiliary plane projection auxiliary auxiliary plane projection if we recollect whatever was discussed in beach wall solution there will be two planes representing same sort of beach wall one is represented as B, fault plane other one represented as auxiliary plane so based on this we are able to find out what is the uh, uh, fault plane and which is the i mean we we will be able to locate basically two points over here and then basically based on the direction of dip we can locate what are the compression, what are the tensions over here. So, this is finally, you can say this thing we can also determine with respect to beach wall solution and it is also now determined with respect to stereographic projection. So, this is all related to how uh, for if, if uh, steel unit is given and fault plane solution and rack angles are given, how it can be used to locate the particular fault plane on this particular stereo net uh, this is going to give you an idea about so there are basically two ways one is beach wall solution based on first PV arrival second one is if stereo net is given how you can take uh, the orientation of the fault plane and represent it in terms of stereographic projection so thank you everyone with this uh, we come to the end of lecture 4